welcome to students. So, today we will be looking into this concept of bifurcations. Now, let us again recall the logistic map that we had done previously. So, we look into the logistic map f alpha x is alpha times x into 1 minus x. Now, we had seen that we had looked into a qualitative analysis of this family of functions and we had observed here that as parameter alpha changes from 0, I mean going up from 0 to 4, right, the dynamics changes from being a very simple dynamics without periodic points, with periodic points, simple kind of periodic points and becoming highly chaotic. So, we had seen that the dynamics changes as the parameter changes and this aspect of change of dynamics with the parameter is called bifurcations. Mm -hmm. So, what are bifurcations? We can simply define them as the process of change The process of change in dynamics with the change in parameter now in our population model we had studied the logistic map which is again a family of curves. Today, let us look into another example. So, we take up this example, again another family of curves, we define f c of x to be equal to x square plus c. Now, if you look into this particular curve, right, this again as your c varies, right, this family varies and with this part, we, we, we can again try to look into, we can look into the qualitative analysis of the dynamics shown by this particular function. So, we observe here that when I am looking into x square plus c, right, and if my c is greater than 1 by 4, we can have no fixed points. It's a very simple exercise to check that x square plus 1 by 4 equal to x, right, will not have any solution. What happens now when c equal to 1 by 4? So, we observe that when c equal to 1 by 4, we have exactly one fixed point here, right, and that fixed point is x equal to 2. So, you have x equal to 1 half as a fixed point. Now, what can you say about this particular fixed point? So, we see that here, your f c prime of x is 2 x, right. So, for this particular point, so when c equal to 1 by 4, right, we find that f 1 by 4 prime at 1 by 2 happens to be equal to 1. So, here basically your 1 by 2 happens to be a non hyperbolic fixed point. So, 1 half is a non hyperbolic fixed point and since my double prime, right, it is not equal to 0 anywhere, right, this point is unstable. It does not attract, may it attracts from one side, it does not attract from the other side. But what happens here as we vary our c? So, we try to say this graphs as c varies. So, we try to say this particular graph. Now, what happens at c greater than 1 by 4? you find that this has no fixed points. When c equal to 1 by 4, we find that it exactly intersects the diagonal in 1 half. So, there is only one fixed point here. As c becomes greater than, as c becomes less than 1 by 4, we find that there are two fixed points here. So, exactly at c equal to 0, we have 
the function is just x square and we very well have studied the dynamics of x, x square. So, at c equal to 0 we get 2 points and when we get 2 particular points, 2 fixed points, we know that one of the points will be a source and one of the points will be a sink. Now, this particular aspect goes on till we reach c equal to minus 3 by 4. What happens at c equal to minus 3 by 4? So, let us start looking into that part. So, what happens when c equal to minus 3 by 4? We have 2 fixed points right? and maybe I can put up this 2 fixed points to be say it is minus half and the other point is 3 by 2. Now, what happens at minus half? So, we find that f minus 3 by 4 prime at minus half, right, it is nothing but minus 1. So, again here minus half becomes a non hyperbolic fixed point. And what can you say about this particular fixed point? This Cosian derivative here will be negative, this Cosian derivative here is negative and hence this is a sink. Right? Things again change when your c decreases from minus 3 by 4. So, as it goes beyond minus 3 by 4, you find that a periodic orbit. So, it starts with a non hyperbolic fixed point and the other non hyperbolic fixed point we get it at c equal to minus 3 by 4 and once c goes beyond minus 3 by 4 that means it decreases from minus 3 by 4 we find that there is a periodic orbit of period 2 coming up. So, we will look into this fact what happens when c is less than minus 3 by 4. So, when c is less than minus 3 by 4 of course, it does have two fixed points but then there is a periodic orbit of period 2 coming up. And if we try to look into this aspect, right, just try to look into this further, we find that this again displays the same kind of dynamics that you had observed for the logistic map. So, we try to look into the bifurcation diagram for this particular function. So, we look into this function f c x equal to x square plus c. What we find is that there is no periodic point for c greater than half, there is no periodic point here. When c is equal to half, you get one particular periodic point, right, at one fixed point basically. Either the orbits converge to this point or they diverge, right. So, you only find this particular periodic uh, fixed point and that continues till you reach minus c equal to minus 3 by 4, where you have again you have one fixed point minus 3 by 2, you have other fixed point which is not at all, basically it is not at all stable here. So, it goes beyond 1 by 4, right, this is one fixed point, you get two fixed points here, but the other fixed point is not at all into picture because it is not at all, uh, it is a, it's a source, right, so everything diverges away from here. There is only one which is attracting something to itself. So, you can see in the bifurcation diagram only one of them coming up over here and one of them coming up over here goes up to here. What happens when c is less than minus 3 by 4? Again you find that the fixed points they become source and what you find is that a periodic orbit of period 2 that becomes a sink and the orbits are attracted to this periodic points of orbit 2. This goes on till your c reaches minus 11 by 4. Once it crosses minus 11 by 4, you again find a bifurcation here because then what happens here is that this periodic orbit of period 2, right, it loses its attractive nature, it becomes repelling and then there is another periodic point of period 4 which comes into picture. So, if we try to look into this and we try to look into this further, what we find here is that we exactly, not exactly in a same manner but we exactly get the same kind of figure that we had seen for the logistic map. Now, this is the bifurcation diagram 
the bifurcation diagram for the logistic function. So, I should say f alpha x equal to alpha x 1 minus x. So, if we try to look into this bifurcation diagram for we find that this exactly the picture that you get for this quadratic family is same as what you had got over here. So, there is a fixed point which is attracting then that loses its attractive nature and then there is another periodic orbit of period 2 which comes up which becomes attracting and then that loses its nature and then again there is an attracting period of period 4 coming up. So, what we find here is that there is bifurcation as your parameter changes and when this parameter changes it basically results into the doubling of period. So, what becomes repelling and what becomes attracting is exactly the double it is the double period of what was attracting earlier and so this bifurcation is also called the period doubling bifurcation. So, this is a period this is an example of a period doubling bifurcation. So, we have a period doubling bifurcation here and ultimately we get into the same thing. Now, what happens to all such period doubling bifurcations? Is there a way where we can have some kind of quantitative theory of bifurcations? So, we let us let us look into the logistic map once again since we have studied that in detail. So, we look into this logistic map and we say that we have this sequence alpha ends of parameter where a bifurcation occurs. So, the dynamics changes the dynamics remains actually constant for a long stretch of alpha and then it changes at some particular point. So, we have this alpha n to be a parameters be the sequence of parameters where bifurcations occur and we are looking into a logistic map. So, let us say that where a bifurcation occurs in the logistic map in the logistic family. Now, what happens to this particular alpha n is is there a way where we can actually try to compute this alpha n knowing some parts can we compute the other. So, it was observed by Michel Figenbaum somewhere again in 1980s that there is a way of quantifying this period doubling bifurcation uh, quantifying this kind of bifurcation. So, what he observed that when whenever you take say let me take talk in terms of delta n. So, let this delta n be say alpha n minus alpha n minus 1 right let us take this ratio alpha n. So, the difference between the previous two changes in bifurcation where the bifurcation occurred. So, difference between the previous two parameters where bifurcation occurred and the difference between the next two parameters where the bifurcation occurs. So, you look into this particular concept plus 1 minus alpha n. So, you try to look into this particular ratio let delta n be this ratio and let delta be the limit as n tends to infinity of this delta n. Then this limit is a universal constant for all kind of period doubling bifurcation and this limit turns out to be of course, it is a irrational number it turns out to be something like 4.5. 6692061 and so on. So, this is a universal constant and basically this constant is called the Figenbaum constant. And this shows some kind of universality 
into the dynamics of all such one parameter families which undergo period doubling bifurcation. Now, let us look into what is the aspect this Wigenbaum constant has other implications also. So, let us try to look into this bifurcation diagram once again and for the present being I just want you to concentrate on two aspects. Supposing I forget this part, right? I forget this particular portion of the bifurcation diagram and I just consider this particular portion then we find that this particular portion is exactly similar to the whole. Forget this particular portion of the bifurcation diagram, I am forgetting this particular portion of the bifurcation diagram, I am looking into this particular portion. We find that this particular portion is also exactly similar to the whole one. Now, I can do that this at various stages. So, at various stages, Right? I can forget a part of bifurcation and I can look into what happened at particular point. Maybe if I try to magnify and look into this particular point, I find that here also I get the same kind of. So, for example, if I look into this aspect, I just look into this particular picture, right? what I find is that going from here to here, right? I get the same kind of picture. So, what is observed here is that this particular picture is some sort of has some sort of self similarity into it. So, within chaos there is also an underlying self similarity or something geometric there and the measure of this geometric this kind of geometric figures which are self similar are called fractals. So, you find that there is some kind of fractal aspect to this also and the Fickenbaum constant is also related to this kind of fractal nature of the bifurcation diagram. So, we have this figure bound constant and we try to now look into another map. Now, this time we are not looking into a family of maps, we are just considering one particular map. So, I am looking into this particular map which I call the tent map. The reason of calling it a tent map is because it looks like a tent. Now, look into this tent map. So, this tent map takes the value 2 x between 0 and half, it takes the value twice 1 minus x between half and 1. The slope at each and every point is 2, excepting at the point half where it is not differentiable. So, we find that this particular point is not a, this is not a smooth compared to logistic curve, it is on, it is a smooth curve everywhere, but this particular curve is not smooth everywhere, but this is kind of piecewise I can call this map as piecewise linear. It is linear, it is completely linear between 0 and half and it is completely linear between half and 1 and it has a slope 2 almost everywhere. right? So, now let us try to look into this particular tent map and try to look into the dynamics of this tent map. So, one thing here is I can easily see this from the picture itself that it has two fixed points, it has one fixed point at 0 and it has another fixed point at this particular point. Now, it is very easy to check that it is at this particular point. So, basically this will be a fixed point of this particular equation right? and that turns out to be if you can compute that, that can turns out to be 2 by 3. So, what happens here is you have two fixed points here, you have a fixed point at 0 and you have another fixed point at 2 by 3. The question comes up here that for this particular tent map, we do have fixed points, do we have period 2 points, do we have period 3 points. So, one can simply observe that look into the tent map, take any n in n. And we want to know all those values of x for which t to the power n of x will be equal to 0. Now, try to compute this for any n, right? we want t to the power n of x to be equal to 0 and we find that whenever x happens to be equal to twice k upon 2 to the power n, so actually it should be 2 to the power n minus 1, does not matter. 
where 0 is less than or equal to k is less than or equal to 2 to the power n minus 1. So, if I look into all these aspects I find that for all such x my t to the power n of x happens to be equal to 0. Now, I want to also compute this is just kind of computing stuff that t to the power n of x when is it equal to 1. So, looking into the fact when t to the power n x is equal to 1 we find again something similar. So, this happens this is true for all x equal to 2 to the power k minus 1 upon 2 to the power n where my k varies now my k varies between 1 and 2 to the power n minus 1. So, one thing is clear I have at all these particular values I have that in n steps x reaches 0 and for this particular points in n steps x reaches 1. So, whenever I start with this interval, so I start with this interval k upon 2 to the power r and k plus 1 upon 2 to the power r. If I start from this interval, I'm, I know that in this interval I will always find points such that one of them in n step reaches 0, one of them in n step reaches 1 and hence there will be a fixed point for t to the power n in this interval. So, what we, we have observed is so there exists x right such that t to the power n x is equal to x. There are two things that we observe from here. First thing is that for every n we have a periodic point of period n and how many such periodic points can we have as we know that this is tending to 0 for all k between. So, these are 2 to the n values here right. So, the fixed points of t to the power n right will be 2 to the power n there are 2 to the power n fixed points. So, how many periodic points of period n you can have? what you are doing is you are just subtracting or you are from 2 to the power n just remove all the fixed points right of uh, t to the power n minus 1 t to the power n depending on because they will be fixed points here in case n happens to be a multiple of k. So, you remove all the periodic points what you get is the periodic points of period n. So, that gives me one thing it says that there do exist for every n there exist periodic points of period n and something more. Now, think of this interval right I am looking into this interval as k varies I am looking into this interval we are just partitioning we can vary k from say 2 to the 0 to 2 to the power n minus 1. So, if we vary k in this manner we are just taking a partition of 0 1 right into say partitioning that right with the scrap of 2 to the power r right length 2 to the power r we are, we are partitioning that into uh, sub intervals of length 2 to the power r and that tells me that an any every such such sub interval contains a periodic point. So, it also tells me that the periodic points will be dense. Right? So, what we find here is that the periodic points are dense. Now, we are interested in in fact, this is a very simple curve. So, we may be interested in looking into the periodic points also. So, this is some kind of numerical results or basically I would say this are some kind of number theory results that you can get. So, I am defining my T x to be equal to 2 x for 0 less than or equal to half x less than or equal to half and it is twice 1 minus x for 0 less for half less than or equal to x less than or equal to 1. So, you find that this is your tent map and for this particular tent map you want to see what happens to the what are all the periodic points. So, a simple computation right some kind of observation gives me that if I look into this particular point say 2 to the power 5. 2 by 5. 
supposing I take this point to 2 by 5, then what happens to 2 by 5? Now, 2 by 5 basically lies in the first half and in the first half my graph, uh, my map, uh, the value of the function is 2 x. So, it is being mapped to 4 by 5. Now, 4 by 5 lies in the second half, right. So, here my function is twice 1 minus x. So, where is 4 by 5 being mapped to? It is again being mapped to 2 by 5. So, I find that 2 by 5 happens to be a periodic point of period 2, right. 2 by 5, 4 by 5, these are periodic points of period 2. Now, I go a little bit further, right, and I take this observation of looking into 2 by 7. Where is 2 by 7 being mapped to? It is mapped to 4 by 7. Where is 4 by 7 being mapped to? 6 by 7. Where is 6 by 7 being mapped to? Again 2 by 7. So, we find that 2 by 7, 4 by 7, 6 by 7, these are periodic points of period 3. These are all elementary function because our function is very simple, we can have make such elementary observations. Let me now look into 2 by 9, where is this being mapped to? Obviously, 4 by 9, where is 4 by 9 being mapped to? So, this is being mapped to 8 by 9, where is 8 by 9 being mapped to? What did we observe here? Again, periodic orbit of period 3. What happens to 2 by 11? Going a little bit further, six by eleven. Next. 10 by 11, 2. again 2 by 11, what did we get? A periodic point of period 5, very simple deductions we can see that all points of the form even number divided by an odd number, right, tend to be periodic points even by odd right they tend to be a periodic points for some particular period here. Now, we can take this theory, we can just make this observation here. The other thing which we again want to look into, what happens to the dyadic rationals? So, we are looking into the form, all rationals of the form q upon 2 to the power n. What happens to this particular say rationals? So, let us start with 1 by 2 to the power n, right, and we know that in n steps, in n minus 1 steps, get this is going to reach 1 by 2, right, and then 1 by 2 is mapped to 1, and then 1 is mapped to 0. We know that 0 is a fixed point. So, we find that this point 1 by n, 1 by 1 upon 2 to the power n happens to be eventually fixed. What can you say about all dyadic rationals in this particular way? They all turn out to be somewhere eventually fixed. Now, let us look into those rationals, right, maybe of the form odd or maybe try to let, let us try to summarize this for all rationals. Now, I am looking into all rationals between 0 and 1. Can we say that all these rationals are either periodic points or eventually periodic points? The dyadic ones are definitely there. So, a very nice elementary observation about the stent map is that all these rationals, right? So, if I take q intersection 0, 1, all these rationals, right, they are either periodic. or eventually periodic. Let us look into the next observation. 
this is my map t we know that this map t has a slope 2 everywhere right modulus 2 everywhere so what we find here is that t prime of x this is either 2 or minus 2 everywhere it's either 2 or minus 2 it's 2 basically when your 0 is less than x i'm pushing this up less than x less than half we are not looking into the endpoints and half is less than x is less than 1 right we find that t prime x is always 2 or minus 2 that tells me that each of this periodic point is always going to be a source right they are all repelling periodic points that means if i look into the dynamics of tent map it's a very interesting dynamics we find that all it has periodic points of all orders in fact, it has a dense set of periodic points. What we have seen is that every rational is either periodic or eventually periodic. So, we know the dynamics of a dense setting here, but for the other half, we do not know what happens to the dynamics because everything here, right, all the periodic points here, none of the periodic points here is attracting, all the periodic points here are repelling, right. So, we can say that all periodic points are repelling here. Now, this gives an interesting observation what happens to the non periodic orbits. So, if you look into the non periodic orbits, they have nowhere to settle. So, they will just keep on moving throughout 0 1. Now, with this observation, we try to see something more on tent maps, but before that, we look into some more definitions. So, I want to define few things here, and for that, again, we get back to the work abstract concept of matrix spaces. So, I am looking into my matrix space x. So, I have a matrix space say x dx and I have another matrix space say y dy. And now, I am looking into this dynamical system. I am looking into two different dynamical systems. So, I have a dynamical system here x f and I have another dynamical system here y say g. Now, I have this two different dynamical systems and I am looking into the fact that if there exist a homeomorphism h from x to y such that h f is same as g h that means, these two functions are the same at each and every point x of x right. Then the dynamical systems x f and y g are topologically conjugate. Now, exactly what do we mean by saying that these are topologically conjugate? So, let us draw this picture here. Say I have this x here, right, my space x here, my space y here. There is a map here from x to y, x to x there is a map, there is a map from y to y, there are maps from x to y here and we know that f takes x to x, g takes y to y, h takes x to y and again h takes h to y that means h inverse will be taking y to x and we find that this basically this diagram right happens to be commutative. So, I can say that I have h f equal to g h or I can write my g as h f h inverse is same as g or I can say that my f is same as h inverse g h. So, that is what we mean by topologically conjugate or we say that this is what is called 
a conjugacy. So, we call this a conjugacy. What are the properties of topologically conjugate systems? So, we look into this topologically conjugate system. Now, if h from defined from x to y, now x is simply a map from x to y. So, if h from x to y is a conjugacy, so between my x f and y g, then I can take any power of f, so I can take any iterate of f, it will also be a conjugacy between that. to the power n and y g to the power n right for every n in n I can take any power right it is going to be a conjugacy. If my f and g are homeomorphisms we can basically take n belonging to z because then it will be a conjugacy for the other aspect also. So, if h is if my f and g are homeomorphisms we can look into n belonging to z. Now, what does essentially what is the meaning of this aspect? Think of that. If I have my f of x to be equal to x, so I take my f of x to be equal to x. Now, what is h of f x? Simply h of x, but I know that my h f map h f is same as g h. So, what we get here is g h of x is same as h x, which basically is same as saying right since we are looking into composition that g of h x is same as h x, which tells me that every fixed point of f in x corresponds to a fixed point of g in y right. The converse is also similar every fixed point will be corresponding to the fixed point in x. So, that means that the number of fixed points that f has is same as the number of fixed points that g has right and both these fixed points correspond can be corresponded with each other. There is another aspect now as I said that it is also conjugacy you can also see that it is a conjugacy between f to the power n g to the power n. What happens when f to the power n x equal to x? I look into again h of f to the power n x same as h x, which means that g to the power n h of x is same as h x, which basically means that g to the power n of h x is same as h x. So, the periodic points in x correspond to the periodic points in y, the two systems are distinct, right? my two systems I have the dynamical system x f and I have a dynamical system y g. So, the map acting on y is g, the map acting on x is f, but since there is a conjugacy between them you can say that they have the same orbits, the same number of orbits, same type of orbits you can always relate one to the other. So, this is something which topological conjugacy is something which is sort of giving us equivalence in the dynamical system. So, we call the two dynamical systems to be equivalent if they are topological conjugate. So, let us write it down. So, the systems x f and y g are called equivalent they are topologically conjugate. This can be thought of something like a homeomorphism between two dynamical systems right. So, basically this is a morphism. So, conjugacy is nothing but it is basically a morphism between two systems. Now, similar aspect here is 
which we can also look into, we are not going into details here, but we will be needing this concept some of the time later. What happens when you are looking into your map h, right? This map h from x to y is just a continuous subjection. So, if x h from x to y is simply a continuous subjection, I do not get this are not homeomorphic, but I can say that periodic points here, right? they are mapped to periodic points here, may not be the same period. In case of conjugacy, it is the same period, right? here it may not be the same period, but periodic points here are mapped to periodic points here. So, ultimately we are carrying out this property from x to y and this is something which is called a semi conjugacy. Semi conjugacy or we say that x is an extension of y or I can say that y is a factor of x. So, we can think of and then my h happens to be a factor map, we can say that okay, fine y is a factor of x, I always have a continuous surjection which takes my x to y. So, the systems x and y are related in the sense that there whatever property the, there are properties of x which are being carried forward to y. The entire if you look into the abstract theory of dynamics, it always looks into what are the properties which can be extended, right? what are the properties which can be taken as a factor which are satisfied by factors. So, this is another aspect of looking into systems, but why we had mentioned this here was we again want to go back to our system logistic map. So, we go back to our logistic map here. So, I have my f 4 of x, now I am looking into my parameter being equal to 4. So, f 4 of x was 4 x times 1 minus x and I had my tent map here t x equal to right, twice x, where I have 0 is less than or equal to x, less than or equal to half and I have twice 1 minus x, where my 1 by y half is less than or equal to x is less than or equal to 1. We define h from 0 1 to 0 1 is h of x equal to sin square pi by 2 x. So, this we can consider at half of 1 minus cos of pi x. What is? So, we start with say 0 less than or equal to x less than or equal to half. Now, my t here happens to be equal to 2 x. So, if I look into my h of t x, my h of t x is nothing but half of 1 minus cos of 2 pi x. Now, 1 minus half of 1 minus cos of 2 pi x, I can write it as 1 minus cos square pi x. Now, 1 minus cos square pi x, I can write it again as 4 times half of 1 plus cos of pi by pi x into 1 minus cos of pi x and I need a 1 by 2 again here multiplying by 4. So, this is half of 1 plus cos pi x into half of 1 minus cos pi x and we find that this is nothing but I have 4 here, this is nothing but my h of x. So, this is h of x and we find that this particular term right turns out to be nothing but this is 1 minus h of x. So, this particular term turns out to be f 4 of h of x. So, this is f 4 of h of x and we find that h of t x equal to f 4 of h of x for all x between 0 and half. Similarly, one can calculate what happens between half and 1, my t x changes here, but again we find the same, we can have the same calculation, we can say that here my 
h of t x happens to be f 4 of h x. So, what we find here is that you take the interval 0 1, go to the interval 0 1, right. So, your f 4 is taking 0 1 to 0 1. Again, I have this interval 0 1 here, my h takes 0 1 to 0 1. Again, in interval 0 1 here, my h takes 0 1 to 0 1 and I have my tent map t taking 0 1 to 0 1. This diagram commutes and hence we can say that the dynamics of the tent map is same as the dynamics of the logistic function when alpha equal to 4. Now, we have already seen what is the dynamics of the logistic function when alpha equal to 4, right. It is highly unpredictable there and hence we can say that the tent map displays the same dynamics there. The uh, orbits of the tent map basically correspond to the orbits of the logistic map when alpha equal to 4 and they have the same dynamics. We also we stop here today.